Thank you so much for tapping in, tuning on, tuning in with I and Chantra C. Babbler on our evolutionary rise of high that is happening at this metafungent time right now. So welcome. I um, This is a blind reading. I have no idea what we are going to dive into, tap into, turn on into, and that's just the way that it's going to be. And so I've been sitting here for a little bit, just connecting and allowing for the free flow of this channeling to take place, knowing that whatever messages is going to be, is going to be, and whatever is trans firing here or transcribing will be exactly what it needs to be for those that it shall be for you know what I'm saying um so welcome thank you so much for meeting me here in this place right so there's a lot of things going on and all these messages are timeless but this is an evolutionary channel and so we're going to tap in for our own evolutionary revolutionary alchemistic type um waves that we are setting the stage for here as we engage with one another right so um yeah so oops, that one already oh i have seen this one before 16 angel right the angel here the angel being rescued to Right, the angel transforming, going through it, imprisoned, judgment, and go. Right, so here we go. We got some justice, Libra. A energy the number six or nine. And I'm seeing five, six, nine. <laughs> A, and then you got this is either the north node or the south node. So I'm gonna go with I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the south node south node because that would be our like past life um type of influences our conditionings the behavioral patterns and conditionings right um then you have 12 so you could have been born on day 12 the month december that would be december and then also here eight december 8th um, or January, March, April, May, June, July, August. You could be born in August, or you could be a life path number eight. You could be a life path number three, a life path number six, or a life path number five, life path number nine. Doesn't matter, right? And then this is Mars energy. I believe double Mars energy. So what are we checking here, right? Double Mars energy, fire energy. Then we have Aries right here, another fiery type energy, right? Here. Right? And then Libra again. So you can have Libra in your chart, Aries in your chart, right? So you can have a Venus in Aries, um, Venus in Libra. Uh, Venus and Gemini. You could be a Gemini, Cancer, Aries, right? Aquarius. Doesn't matter. Life path number five, born on the fifth month, January, March, April, May, right? May six, May twelve. There's a lot of this Mars. A lot of this Mars type of energy, right? Um, so 
so there's a lot of this Mars energy here, right? Um, one, two, three, and then I'm seeing it over here too, right? So it's like Mars, 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 and Mars in our in in our birth charts and astrology, right? It's the planet of energy, action, and sex. So this is coming up strong, right? Um, because so whatever your Mars sign is in, right, um, you want to look into that for this reading too, because it can shed light on your own sexuality, your own energy, right, the desires that light you up from the inside, right, because this is Piscean season, and although I say these messages are timeless, whatever, this is the energy this is going to lend whenever you do find yourself here into your atmosphere, you know, so um, that what you desire that lights you up inside and how you can make moves, right, to fulfill these desires, these passions, the action, right? Mars is all about action, taking action, right? And how you can cope with certain kind of challenges or things that might bring up your anger, right? Or your trigger, right? Your aggression, right? So this this is coming up strong, right? So what, so what energies are at play here in regards to how you are making moves in fulfilling that which you desire to make manifest here in your multidimensional reality, but making it really, really real, right? So South Node placements, that's revelation to us in many kind of things, right? So we're, we're traveling our South Node, right, energies. And so this is where they'll say, what was your past life like, right? So the same way like our moon represents our emotions and our intuition and sometimes even fate in how we determine how we look at these lunar nodes, um, the north node and the south node are two points, right, in the chart that discuss how fate factors into our own lives, right? And so here is where you can figure out like from from this perspective right um your south node right the difference between it with your north node is simply past and future that's just the difference like that's a light way of how you can just view it right respectively it's deeper than that it goes really deep this is just brushing the surface here as we illuminate that which is being illuminated here thank you so much for tapping and turning on and tuning in right so because the north node represents that which we're everything we're about to experience in our future lives like you go true north node right the south node represents everything that you have experienced in your previous lives right so this is your conditioning so the south node shows our natural skills and gifts and abilities but it also reveals our traumas from our past lives too right so it's ideal to heal the south node as well right um, it also represents our um, talents and our abilities, our innate gifts, um, the tendencies that we bring into this lifetime from from when we are born and the composites and complete um, the our birth chart analysis and all that kind of stuff, which is going to be revelation for each and every one of us. I mean, you know, take everything that which with a grain of um, salt. If you watched my previous video where I spoke about um you know, everything is human coined terms. So, you know, take with it as you will. But the South Node does represent like our talents and abilities, skills, right? 
and perhaps you know that which so it's like it's bringing in your old um your baggage that which you but your baggage could be good too it doesn't necessarily have to be bad you know what i'm saying so um the south node is notorious for repurposing right our karmic lessons from previous lives or encouraging previous personality truths to pop up to 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 help us bring a sense of wholeness right to to unify the south node and north node right because you're not trying to rid yourself that which you are you're trying to embrace all that you are in that south node north node kind of placements right so um so south node can represent the the challenges that um that we are given in this lifetime but it could also represent our skills um and it's just a tool for us to encourage us to utilize so that we can push towards a better future. And so that's what, you know, here, this is all about. So, so the same way that now life can be riddled with challenges and lessons and stuff like that. So <laughs> is our South Node life, our past life too, right? So we can think about it in a perspective of like relationships, but um this is a lot of emotional baggage as well, like ups and downs that you carry into your next relationships and all this kind of stuff too. So we got Mars energy up in here, right? Um, so how we handle the aggression of that which we desire to and how we bring about this in our um, now attire, right? Unifying this, right? So what have we, and this is how I'm reading it too, like, what has been so suppressed because this is coming up strong right these the mars energy right and then the mars energy just flipped to which one is this one <laughs> I'm like, which one is this one it's saturn Papa, Grandpa Saturn. So, all right. So, right now we're going, we're about to enter our Saturn and Pisces era, right? Saturn leaving Aquarius and entering Pisces, too. So, this Mars way of, of how we go about and taking action towards that which we are wishing to take action upon now this is going to be the interesting ride right the interesting ride the interesting ride so here we meet our renaissance angel right so i question while i create i question while i create so your choice of symbol is an angel painted by the Renaissance master Raphael, the genial and much younger contemporary of artists Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. Angels were popular mystical subjects for paintings during the Renaissance, right? Successfully merging both pagan and Christian tradition, right? Vasari in his description of this painting entitled Deliverance of St. Peter said, when you look at the picture, it lights your face. And the painted light with different night effects complete, competes so well with the living light that you seem to see the smoke of a torch, right? The splendor of the angel and the dark shadow of the night, all so natural and real that you would never say they were painted. So exactly has such a difficult fancy been expressed? The armor, the shadows, the reflections, and the luminosity um, of the warmth of the lights are so dazzling, executed, that truly it may be said that, Raph that he, Raphael, was the master of all others, right? So the heart of the Italian Renaissance was in Northern Italy, extending down to Rome. It included Milan, Turin, Florence, Umbria, Siena, and Verona. Other areas of Europe greatly affected by the Renaissance were the regions in Avignon, in France, and Aragon in Spain. Holland, England, and Germany also had important Renaissance movements. All right, so 
so this can be dated to or from around 1492, which I like to add up the numbers to, right? So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, which equates to 7, right? And with the completion of Leonardo's The Last Supper, the last one is the end of. He was perhaps the most expert painter, right? So here we go. So... So the Renaissance Italian spoke a Latin-based, uniformed language that could be understood throughout the country. So the Italians generally tend to be a dark people, but it's not uncommon to find blonde, blue-eyed Italians, especially in the northern regions. It has been recorded that both Leonardo and Botticelli were such fair northern Italian types. Renaissance women often bleached their dark hair and plucked out eyelashes and eyebrows to increase their attractiveness. Among the upper classes, much attention was given to dress with garments fashioned of rich brocades, velvets, and silks. Renaissance men wore short, pleated tunics, velvet hats, pantaloons, and stockings. All right, so the question here, right, because the card itself stands for, I question while I create. So I question is the most frequent expression found in the notebooks of Leonardo da Vinci. This is a fitting epithet for all movements of the Renaissance. Even today, we associate the Renaissance with inspired genius and the universal man. It was time when artistic and scientific discoveries overpowered the implementation of papal laws. Idealism and insatiable curiosity and a wish to transform into greatness, all that was mediocre were the brilliant forces at work behind the Renaissance. It was Michelangelo who said, nothing worth preserving can be done without genius. In many respects, we find the full measure of genius in the works of the Renaissance masters. Their intuitive and logical brains seem to work in perfect harmony. And unified mathematics and pictorial sciences both Raphael and Leonardo utilized complex systems of mathematics in their painting. Only Michelangelo claimed to take a more intuitive or inspired approach. He believed that the artist was not the creator of ideas, but merely the receiver. Michelangelo said that potentially great ideas exist in everyone, but it took a person of unusual receptivity and intuition to find them in the natural world through his or her genius. It was his belief that only through numerous failures could true genius emerge. Renaissance thinkers advanced the view of nature derived from the writings of Plato. It was though that realistic paint and paintings were an imitation of nature that revealed higher truths hidden within the forms that they were depicted. Everything had a secret nature that could be revealed through analytical deduction and creative discovery. Light and, it, and its effects held a special in, interest for the Renaissance masters. Bathing objects in light is merging them with the infinite, wrote Leonardo. So the Renaissance fascination with angels took on a new meaning in the notebooks of Leonardo. He dreamed of transporting himself into a supernatural realm by creative buoyant wings and imitating the movements of birds. He often passed through places where birds were sold, Vasari noted, and took them out of their cages with his hands, paying the vendors the price demanded, then allowed them to fly away, giving them back their lost freedom. It was through Leonardo's many failed experiments that the idea of man flight was developed, enabling humankind in the 20th century to achieve his dream, right? So the three great masters of the Renaissance had distinct personalities. Leonardo was the moody one, exhibiting an air of aloofness, sadness, and a chilly distance about him. Left-handed, he wrote in his journals in mirror writing that could only be read when held up to a mirror. Theorists speculate that Leonardo may have been dyslexic. Most likely, he was attempting to keep his experiments secret since he was once charged with witchcraft by the church for dissecting corpses. One story tells how Leonardo spent many afternoons visiting a hundred-year-old man in the hospital, soothing him and covering him with blankets when he complained of the cold. As soon as the old man died, Leonardo promptly went to work performing an autopsy. 
Michelangelo was the arrogant genius, a powerhouse of creative energy and a loner. He was jealous of Leonardo to an irrational degree and often chided Leonardo in public jesting over his many unfinished projects and failed experiments. But Raphael once wrote that Michelangelo was as lonely as the hangman. Still, Michel Michelangelo was the darling of the church as painter of the Sistine Chapel, Chapel and architect and supervisor of the building of St. Peter Basilica. Raphael was the youngest and best liked of the master artists. Warm and friendly, the scope of his greatness was not as wide as Michelangelo's or Leonardo's, yet some critics believe that Raphael excels them both with the perfect craftsmanship of his paintings. So it's interesting, you know, and if you don't find it interesting, you can skip through or you can just keep it moving. <laughs> so, and then it's interesting because look at, now that we're reading about the conclusion of this card, right? It says, you have chosen the Renaissance angel for your past life symbol. And it's, we were just talking about the South Node, the past life symbol. So I, I like how that goes together beautifully, right? You are versatile, multifaceted, and most of all, curious. Forever asking one more question. I love that. You wish to express yourself clearly, but with a unique or artistic vision, like these these renaissance masters right that be you you have a uniqueness uh, 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 a one-of-a-kind kind of um energy to you right you wish to express yourself clearly but with a unique or artistic vision you perceive a deeper nature in everything in which you yearn to unlock often you are unable to relax and your nerves tend to be unsettled your mind spins out of control, putting your body in a state of constant turmoil. Because of this, you may suffer from stress-related illnesses as your body reacts to these inner conflicts. You are especially interested in philosophy and mysticism. Your view of mysticism is revealed through an interest in the higher laws of theology, poetry, and platonic philosophy. The idea of these celestial beings in heaven intrigues you. You may not be... <laughs> so um the idea of these celestial beings in heaven intrigues you you may not be particularly religious in in a traditional sense but you are interested in the roots of christianity and, and intrigued by the life of christ somehow this beautiful story represents an inner expression of yourself pagan ideas are also a source of intrigue but you are not one to focus your interests too intently in any one direction you want to leave yourself open to consider many possibilities you may begin projects with great enthusiasm only to deter to peter out when you come up with a brand new idea it is essential that you learn how to finish a project, <clears throat> right? If you are an artist or a writer, you may have many unfinished paintings or stories. <laughs> if you had a brilliant idea for building a dream home, it is most likely still unfinished, right? You deny the world great gifts with such chronic procrastination. <sighs> I love this. In this way, you are a Leonardo type of character. Vasari wrote this about the sullen-eyed bearded master. In, erudi in, erudi <laughs> in erudition, and especially in literature, he would have derived great profit if he had not been so changeable and unstable. He started many things, and when they were begun, he gave them up. You have an advanced sense of spatial perception and face recognition and are more talented at remembering faces than names. <laughs> you may have had problems in reading at school or drew certain letters of the alphabet backward as a child, but it didn't take you long to develop it into an above average reader. Art has been a source of pleasure for you throughout your life and it is likely that you have some artistic skills in many different medias. You are easily stimulate, stimulated by any creative opportunity. However, complete freedom of expression is a must. You cannot excel or feel good about yourself when you're trying to conform, and this is a big problem for you. 
You find conformity impossible and confusing. You are never one to follow a crowd. You are not especially rebellious or subversive, but you only know how to do things your own way. You have a special unique vision of the world. You tend to view your own life as a work of art that only you can fashion into something higher, good, or even great. Your inability to flow with the masses is sometimes discouraging and you may feel like an alien dropped from another realm. Hold on. Just remember that when you refuse to fit in, you can only stand out, even though it may be lonely at times. In this way, you are akin to the Renaissance masters. You can make a difference by leading others to higher levels of change through your vision. All others can only follow. I love that. That's beautiful. Hold on. So definitely do check out um, one of my previous videos. I'm not sure. I'll link it. But where I talk about this kind of energy too, that especially here in the way that the world is now, like where social media is this big heavy influence, right? For all of us. And it can be discouraging for one who may not be as revered or acknowledged as someone else who might be more... Um, popular or known or received or well received but and how that can be discouraging to uh, many of the type of unique things that you are that you breed and that this world needs right and it's just like to come to free you right to come to free you from this this self-imprisonment of this mind that can burn at, away all your your talents, your gifts, your skills, that which you're, you're, you're designed to create and make, but you got to get out of like your own way and stuff like that. Right. And it's just like, you know, the many unfinished product projects, ideas, right. Um, startings, right. That you might start and never finish, but you know, we don't want to use the word never, um, so um, matter of factly, because we are infinite multidimensional beings and forever is infinite. And so what may be not be started now or completed now doesn't mean it doesn't have the room for infinite expansion and for you to finish it. So it's a matter of finishing it, right? And, and, and getting out of your own way in how you go about and doing things right and so what I feel like here too is like there's a strong heavy south node influence so this is like whether this is from past lives or not this is a behavioral pattern and conditioning so you might procrastinate a lot you might come up with so many reasons and excuses as to why something is still not flourishing for you or a reason as to why you might not complete something or you might keep cycling the same um, experience or emotion or way of doing something right it's like trying to change a pattern but doing the same thing every single day um, nothing different to change that pattern you know what I'm saying and so um it's just a matter of coming together and 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 helping yourself too but like here this is like for me like another sense of spiritual um empowerment for you to see because look at like that's how divinely lit you is <laughs> that the angels want to remind you constantly of your gifts and talents. And that might be a sense of torment too, because, you know, original and unique be you. Original and unique be you in how you do. And then if you get into a state of depression or procrastination or, um, you fall ill or something or feel like you backslide in some kind of way and you get into your own kind of slump right that's that slump 
is rather debilitating and can cause you to not move at all. But here's this angel of mercy, of fire, of passion, of healing, of energy touching upon you to release you from that self-inflicted prison and bondage that doesn't serve your greatest good, right? So it's interesting. So what other past life influences here are being brought to the surface in regards to what needs to be addressed, right? So that one can unify within their own shrine, the energy mastery that is needed in order to be successful in that which one desires to create for themselves in now times, right? In now spaces, in this now space of creation, of evolutionary development, right? This creation, right? So you have the Saturn too, energy, that I make these by the way, which you took in dot com. So <laughs> I have so Six again, right? January, February, March, April, May, June, June, six, six, eight, life path eight, life path six, life path nine, six, six, eight, eight, nine, nine, eight, six, six, eight, eight, right? Eighty eight could have been born in nineteen eighty eight, nineteen eighty six, right? Um, nineteen sixty eight, December eighth again, October eleventh, November tenth. November 7th, 669, And here we have this Venus energy too, right? So Venus is Saturn and Venus energy, right? That's coming in. And we have the sign of Gemini, Aquarius. Right, cancer. Uh, Pisces right here on the other side. Pisces, Gemini, Aquarius, right? So you have what else did I not see? Right, you got Sun and Jupiter, right? So Sun and Jupiter. Sun and Jupiter, you got Capricorn, Sagittarius, Leo, Capricorn, Sagittarius, Leo, Libra again, right? Virgo, Aquarius, Libra again. Cancer, Aquarius again, Pisces. And the south node showing it though here. South node and Venus. So also in how we love and how we go about for that which we love. Right? So it's like it's like it's like always crushing on somebody but never taking the bold chance or move to make the move to put yourself out there to be vulnerable to express how you really feel because usually it's imagined for real. Right. So it's like living in your state of imagination more than in your state of reality and being perfectly content with staying in that state of fantasy right this is big Piscean energy too right 
healing the fantasy aspect of that which doesn't bring us our desired outcome because you settle for the fantasy because that's easier to say hey i knew that i couldn't get that or uh, achieve that or have that that's why it's a fantasy of mine right so it's checking those fantasies and with your desires because some of your fantasies are your desires and and you really do want to make them manifest and so the suppression the oppression the depression is that lack of boldness that lack of courage or um taking that willpower that 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 drive that mars energy that action oriented energy that is needed in order to 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 make that happen to pop off with that right it's like getting getting in tune with what what was my mars sign yo let me talk to my mars sign up in here let me let's talk about what kind of action we're gonna take and what the hell your problem is so that we can figure that out so we can come up with a solution that's gonna bring about the right action energy to bring forth that which we desire to create right right 10 10 10 over here right so 10 10 right 10 10 wins i always say that right and i'm looking at 11 11 over here too right so 10 10 wins right so how you move about and how you go about and that is 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 going to be telling right it's going to be telling but what do you want to be telling so let's tap into that mars effect energy right right so that mars your intelligence and how multi-talented you are right so you might be too right really um enjoying learning you might learn enjoy learning oh that <laughs> so when i see this card like the lawyer right it's like you 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 put up a good argument you have a good fight you have a good defense you have a good defense right but you also have a good um you you have a good defense but you also have a rigid nature right that can make things like so when i think about the law i think about the system and i think about the rules that one must apply and abide by right in order to achieve so look you learn that life isn't fair and you can still be happy right so that might be the challenge now right so so getting out of the unfairness of of, of a reality right and no longer holding on to that like that victim mindset or <clears throat> and and finding the gift right like of why you are the way that you are and what you do and how you do and what you want how you want that to benefit you right um so so right tending to looking the wounds that hurt too need to learn to let go of the past need to learn to let go of the past right so what other sites a revelation can be revealed in how one can navigate the challenge, right? So uh, uh, um, bring articulation to the challenge so that solution might present itself, right? What is the challenge? What the challenge hidden, not seen, right? Right? The challenge is um, uneducated people, <laughs> right? Um, the, the the challenge is dealing with people that believe themselves to be superior to others, right? And this can cause an argument, right? This is the philosophy of life. So you might enjoy the knowledge and the wisdom that comes with all of it, but the challenge is dealing with all these kind of um toxic type of people and stuff like that, right? So so the lesson here is learning the mastery over the mind, knowing that that's the key to success, right? So the mastery over the mind is the key to success right and and getting out of our own ways right the mastery of the mind this mental um imprisonment that exists right <laughs> whenever you come to my place it's like a treasure chest everywhere everybody always feels like it is 
right? Was was being represented here. So the Queen of Diamonds means to be of good conduct. <laughs> Ready to be of good conduct. But look at this. Do you know where bad girls go? They go everywhere. You don't have to worry about your daughter getting kissed goodnight anymore. Their boyfriends don't leave till sometimes in the morning. Some guys are born bad. Their mother should have thrown away the kid and kept the stork. Right? So a man who convinces his wife that a woman looks stout in a fur coat. Hey, so <laughs> so the queen of diamonds to be of good conduct. To be of good conduct. To be of good conduct. Ah, that could be a challenge. Right? Not really. It's only a challenge for those that are living a life. So like, yeah, so there's like another video too. I don't know which one that is though, where we speak about like, oh yeah, I don't know. But it was just like um, where others, like now it's being selfish because you've always been so selfless. And I said, and then there's people in our spiritual community that are applying these tactics, these measures, these this alchemy of talk, right? Talking about, we gotta be selfless, um, selfish and all this kind of stuff. But meanwhile, they've always been so selfish and all this kind of stuff, right? Um, so like, so that's what this reminds me of. Like, it's like, everything is always a continuation over here. I just want you to understand. Um, so it's always a highly advisable to um watch all my videos, but either way, um, to be of proper conduct, right? We say, oh, that's so simple to to be, right? Like I don't I don't know. Like there's people that talk about um we're just learning how to do the right thing or stuff like that, and like because typically they will seek revenge or typically they would um be bitter, not better. Um, typically they would like want to, um, up, upstage somebody or like have somebody else like suffer their karmic, um, justice, like, and, and how like appeasing that could feel to them if someone got their due justice, like, and, you know, I just feel like there's two types of people, those that enjoy shit like that naturally like and you know and then those that yo I would never I, I would never take it would never satisfy me to 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 um be that way or to know that you got what you deserved and that brought me some leveling of satisfaction because the way that you know for those that are like that like that you can't imagine like ever taking or having satisfaction just because someone else got their due justice because they fudged you over before or something like that um it's just like the people that have done me wrong in my life like I've never wished ill on them nor wanted that type of ill on them and if I ever heard of anything that happened to them later on in life that might be like fucked up like I wouldn't be like home oh, well I'll go for them you get what I'm saying and there's people that um especially in the spiritual community that are like that that they're like good for them good for them they shouldn't have messed with me in the first place and I'm not okay and I'm not like judging these type of two but I'm just saying there's a huge fucking difference between these two type of spiritually awakened and activated folks people that could take pleasure in knowing someone else suffers or someone that can play somebody out on whatever and most of the times they still got some phony baloney bullshit they gotta deal with anyways anyways so yeah it just there's no comparison but either way um it's like for those that i'm talking to like i don't need to tell you what to do to do right it's kind of like the other video the other day with the when when the neighbor was like um uh, if you need any help like you're, you're being presented with what i could use some help with right now like you know um so you're just gonna be altruistic um 
and all this kind of stuff then just be like or if you're just gonna act the part and not really be like you know that's just some clarity and so I just feel like you know for those of you that are watching this and tapping in turning on tuning into this channeling it's because you're somehow out there in the the field you're out there and you're in whether you're active or not on your own socials or whatever you're still out there and and so being out there can be very discouraging it can especially if you tend to be hermit or loner too or isolate away especially if you suffer from any kind of anxiety or depression in some kind of way um it's easy to hide behind the scenes even though you're still out there you know what i'm saying um either way um but you do the right thing and you and 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 it's a shame too that the ones that do mostly all the right things are the ones that get um like shunned to the side. What the hell? <laughs> oh god. Sorry. So um so, and this is a 50-50 crowd because there's those that are all about the right thing that are here. And then there's all of those that want to be about the right thing and they're here. And then there's all of those that are only about that selfish thing and they're here to take that which they think they can take and use it upon that which they want to use it upon for themselves. You get what I'm saying? And so that's why that can come up in this kind of video where it's like you know just do the right thing <laughs> you know what I mean so um what other insights can we offer at this time for the people tapping in turning on tuning in with I on our evolutionary revolution what is the answer? What is the solution? To so much of this pollution. You know what I mean? Definitely check out my Saturn and Pisces readings. Tune in for my full moon reading. That should be posting soon, too. Um, so definitely check that out. Definitely tap in, turn on, tune in daily for daily updates. For every day, there is a new video posted here on Enchantress the Bubbler here on YouTube at 12, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So every single day. Expect a new video to be uploaded that you can tap in, turn on, tune into. You can also follow me on Instagram at Enchantress, E-N-C-H-A-N-T-R-E-S-S. -S. That's me, the one and only. And you can also find me on TikTok at Alchemistic Poetess. That is I. You could also go to witchyutopian.com um, and be a part of our Muse in a Box subscription, which is something that I am enjoying doing. And every 4th and 25th of the month, depending upon when you place your Muse in a Box subscription order, a box will be sent to you, delivered to your door with unique, one-of-a-kind, handcrafted and hand selected items for you in your own muse in a box intuitive experience it's mm -mm good okay you can go check that out over there and that's pretty dope i'm the response that i'm getting about the muse in a box subscriptions are awesome and i'm just very grateful to be a part of that on this journey um there's always new stuff that I'm coming up with and stuff like that. So everything is seasonal and dependent upon that, which I am up to and stuff like that. So what might necessarily be offered now may not necessarily be available later. That's why it's one of a kind. So get it while it's hot. Um, exactly. I have been asked about my teas. 
um, I had ended the subscription platform for the teas sometime last year. Or was it this year? It was last year. Um, because that was where I I needed a break, period. Needed a break. <laughs> I needed a break. And that's what that was about. And that's why I did that. Right? Duh. So major transformation. You can have Scorpio in your chart as well. Um, I'm going to read that from here. Right? In the traditional tarot deck, death is represented as an emaciated, partly skeletal figure walking across the field of severed body parts. Okay. Death, either in the real world or as a symbol of psychic states, is more complex than this. Many tarot decks of the past have demonstrated a fear of death by not naming the card. It was simply known as the card with no name, Voldemort. As with many cards in this deck, the subject matter is so complex that it needs to be parsed. The various aspects of death are here represented by four figures in addition to the additional figure who drags people unwillingly into the underworld, the dance Macabre. In the death card, there are two major messages. Death is simply a stage of being, and without death, there is no rebirth. Death in the inner world is as necessary and unavoidable as death is the physical world, and it is only by experiencing the death that forward movement to the next stage of development is possible. To the alchemist, Negredo is the most frequently discussed process when the matter being worked, the soul of the alchemist was killed. That is broken down to its basic form so that the spirit contained within the matter could be liberated. At the top of the card is death in the form of time. The most obvious association is that when time has run out, death ensues. However, we consider the idea at the symbolic psychic level, it says that the death of any part of the psyche must be exquisitely timed to assure that it leads to the next stage to growth. Time directs its eternal clock to 12. This is the point of the clock when morning changes into afternoon or when one day changes into another, a clear symbol for a major trans transition. And by pointing to the top of the clock, right, um, time says it's a high time to bring about these transitions. Note the number of this card, 13, appears nowhere on the clock. The death and re regeneration promised by this card do not take place within the mundane world and our physical clocks, rather in the infinite time of the unconscious. Beneath time is the more traditional death figure, the draped skeletal figure with a sky. An echo of the gigantic clock, this death figure also holds an hourglass. Note that this death is seated, inactive, perhaps waiting for the right moment. In addition, this death is counterpoised by the bright golden sun rising behind him. This pair of figures, again, emphasizes the major psychological theme of this card, rebirth follows death. The sky connects this death figure to the god Saturn, the god not only of the harvest, thus the sky, but also of time, dissolution, and decay. On the other hand, the sky's crescent shape connects it to the crescent moon of the goddess Artemis, again offering the promise of regeneration and renewal. Artemis is the goddess who drives her stag drawn chariot across the heavens to create the evening and the night. She is the one who will transport the traveler into the dark realm of the unconscious. Below the figure of traditional death is a more complex and more ambiguous figure, the death bringer, the armored figure, a shield in his right hand and a raised sword. Right? A raised sword in his left stands upon another armored figure whom he is presumable to slain. The nature of this death is ambiguous. Was it a fair fight or murder? Was it done for just a cause or for some petty reason? Was it for some high ethical reason or for some revenge or jealousy? Another ambiguity, we cannot see the death bringer's face. Is he human or is he the armored skeleton who is associated with the four, horse, four horsemen of the apocalypse? Is this figure pestilence, war, famine, or death? If he is one of the four horsemen, the last would be the most probable. This adds a theological glass to the figure and religion is certainly an aspect of how most of the Western world sees death. 
Below the Deathbringer's psychic death, death, a skeleton casually posed, heading carefully closed, heading head resting on hand, relaxed and bothered. If a skeleton could have a facial expression, this one might be. So what? However, with this within his rib cages and trapped the young man. Outer death, right here. Outer death encloses inner life, another hopeful symbol. Even within the skeleton of death, life preserved. If the young man is passive, he must wait for his escape until eons pass and the bones of the skeleton turn to dust. If he is active, the preferred path, he can break out given sufficient effort. How did the situation arise? If one turns their back on the outer world, the lack of the external will stifle the internal. The goal demonstrated throughout the tarot is a healthy balance between the two. And only will progress be made. This portion of the card says that appropriately discarded elements of the psyche are difficult to part with. This is the only actual skeleton clearly shown in the card. Like all other skeletons, it suggests a scaffolding for the more vulnerable viscera. It is the framework upon which almost magically everything else hangs together, right? From the stiffness comes flow and grace. It represents the basic bare bones of reality presented to the traveler. To the right and behind these figures is another aspect of death, a black flower. The idea of revitalization and renewal is more than hinted at by the black poppy. The color is, in the Western world, the color of death. And the poppy produces drugs that produce deep sleep, an imitation of death or death itself. However, the poppy is surrounded by bright green leaves symbolizing growth and hope. Below the outer death on the left is a golden horseman, right? And on the right, a transparent dog. Though this card is about death, the golden rider is not one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse who ride white, red, black, and pale horses. Here, the color of the rider and his horse reflects the rays surrounding the rising sun. Thus, he is a positive, hopeful figure. In his right hand, he has a lowered, non-aggressive sword, ready to be engaged in battle. In his left hand, he holds a shield. It is raised as if to protect himself from the negative aspects of death while riding into the field to battle with death, ready to face death and suffer or gain from the consequences. One must be willing to undergo a painful psychic death to achieve rebirth to a new place on the progression to psychic wholeness. This is a powerful card. Okay. At the bottom of this card is the dance of death, a medieval allegory for the universal the universal the universality of death and in this tarot card the universality of the struggle for wholeness. The typical medieval representation of the dance macabre shows the personification of the death summoning representatives from all walks of life to join the dance of the grave. Many of the tarot characters are present, the Pope, the Emperor, the King, the Child, the Four of Cups, for instance, the Laborer of the Three of Coins, the Musician of the Seven Cups, and so on. The tarot card death does not warn the Traveler away. Indeed, it is an invitation, despite the possible pain and fear. This card exhibits the positive aspects of an ending in the world of the psyche, a possible increase in self-awareness, a change in thinking from an old habitual way into a new fresh way, a correct a way to correct old ways or to improve flawed ones. There is no beginning without a previous ending. Change according to this card is inevitable and despite the fear involved will be a positive experience. I love how all the cards fell in accordance to each other, especially in regards to the transformation, the transition that's happening at this time in regards to one's own development and evolution and stuff like that, right? Bringing forth together in unity. I love when it plays so nicely, wonderfully. Like I said, I make these things, witchyutopian.com, witchyutopian, <laughs> witchyutopian.com, witchyutopian.com. <laughs> okay, okay, so yeah. So what else do we have? <gasps> I want to thank you all for tapping in, turning on, tuning in with I. I appreciate each and every one of you. 
Um, what did you do there? <laughs> My legs. Right, so, um, what else? What angelic messages do we have for those of you tapped in or non tuned in to these messages here at this time? Okay. The divine truth is that your parents eternally love you to the best of their ability. Right, the angels are helping you heal from any pain associated with your mother or father. Right, and that tends to be a lot of people's um hangups, right? Um, in regards to um what's happening in their own lives, and it's interesting because you know um I'm gonna keep on talking about parenting as the awakeners the the great awakeners that we are and our role as evolutionary parents and how significant that is for our future generations and the relationship that you have with your child and the way that it is to unfold in healthy wealthy stealthy ways you know what i'm saying and so listen to your intuitive feelings your body is receiving accurate messages from the divine right um power animal your animal spirit guides is a guardian to you and is helping you with this situation so definitely tap in turn on tune in with i because um spirit, animal spirit whisperer in every kind of degree and i work very closely with our spirit animal kingdom and our worldly animal kingdom as well and just my own development in that kind of shamanisms of life is I, I, it's pretty freaking remarkable <laughs> I, yeah so use your spiritual gifts and natural abilities to attract your desired outcomes definitely um subscribe to my instagram for only 99 cents um it's always going to be kept at that price it's not about the money it's about the token of energy exchange exchange between you and i there you'll be gifted immediate access to hundreds plus infinitely growing post content creations um diy strategize um very videos tarot oracle um diy strategies like i said um tips tricks all that in regards to um living your best healthy wealthy stealthy evolutionary revolutionary life and just for 99 cents you would be gifted immediate access to all the infinite informations and um uploads shared over there shared nowhere else that is the beauty of the 99 cents like literally like yes i know i have loads of content in various different platforms on social media but let me tell you there is no content that is shared anywhere else see like how on my social media platforms the ones that are free they might all share um information that could be the same so i can post something that's on my youtube and i can also post it on my instagram i could post it also post it on my um my um tiktok but the exclusive content shared with subscribers which is 99 cents is shared nowhere else and that's the freaking beauty of it like literally like you will have content on there shared no where else and for just 99 cents you get a bang an evolutionary quantum bang for your buck and that's just what's up um with the amount of stuff that i share over there at the infinite times that i do and how it's still growing too um i'm very proud and very um content with the amount of times that i publish and post over there on a monthly basis um and the infinite amount of um mana that you receive mind body heart and soul like you know holistically and stuff like that and it's just really you know um you know um personal information is exchanged with i um and you can cancel at any given time you know what i mean and you can take with you the manner that you receive from the point that which you subscribe and if you wanted to cancel you know anytime um you can so either way 
definitely. And so you can find me on Instagram at Enchantress, E-N-C-H-A-N-T-R-E-S, -S, the one and only. All right. So thank you so much for tapping in, turning on. Till next time. <sighs> Quantum Align. <laughs>